Hi everyone, I'm Zev from the portfolio team at Our Crowd. Um, this session is e-commerce and marketplaces. Uh, we will have a short video and then we'll invite our sponsor up. I'd like to invite Josh Cram from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, who is kindly sponsoring this room today. Well, thanks, thanks for having me. I'm not going to take too much of your time, but it's great to be here, and, and we're delighted to sponsor this forum. Typically, you hear about the U.S. Chamber of Commerce when you see the president and CEO, Tom Donahue, shaking hands with the president or with the congressional leaders, uh, talking about what's important, what's on the mind of the business community in the United States. Um, typically on issues related to immigration, transportation, infrastructure, taxes, you name it. Uh, so it begs the question, why is the U.S. Chamber of Commerce here in Israel, here at our crowd? And it's because Israel is on the minds of U.S. companies in a huge way. You may have heard there's over 200 American companies that have R&D facilities here in Israel. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge and growing ecosystem and, and critical to the growth of our economy and creating jobs and and doing important things uh, for, for the United States economy. So uh, the work that we do is really falls into three categories. One is we work at the, the high level policy uh, level, working with our Congress, working with the administration to find ways to promote and advance the relationship, issues like trade, innovation, uh, investment, and tax policy that, that will impact the U.S.'s relationship so that the, the, the playing field is, is great for all the entrepreneurs and companies doing business. Two, we work with regulators in both countries. Israel's a great place to do business. Oftentimes there may be challenges. For Israeli companies going to the US, there's also challenges. We wanna help, and for entrepreneurs that are here, we wanna understand what are those challenges. We hear about visa issues all the time for Israeli entrepreneurs coming to the United States. We wanna know what those issues are so we can tackle them and we can make sure to find fixes to those. The third thing that we do is educate the, the broader US business community about what's happening here in Israel. Um, by the way, the U.S.'s relationship, you know, th there's more than just New York and California in the United States. Uh, there's a lot of states in between. And, uh, you know, I think what we see our role is, is really to, to find new partners, new advocates, new champions of the bilateral commercial relationship in states all over the country. So we bring groups here all the time um, to, to explain, to, to help find models uh, for them to, to connect in meaningful ways with their business community in the state of Israel. So again, great to be here. Happy to, to chat afterwards and uh, enjoy the session. I'd like to invite Tom Shelley from Visible. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tom, and I'm the Product Marketing Director at Visible the world's most loved event software, the winner of the People's Choice Award three years in a row, the event technology that is powering this amazing event and thousands of other events across the globe. So let's talk a little bit about the world of events. Every year, more than three million professional events are produced around the world. That's a huge number. And other than that, events are considered the largest, the single largest marketing expense of B2B organizations. We're talking about the biggest piece of the pie that marketing teams are investing in events, either organizing events or attending events. This means that clearly organizations see the potential in organizing events and reaching their professional goals. But the question is, are they actually able to create rewarding and successful events? Are those events really events that allow them to increase the number of registrations year after year? Are they actually able to create an engaging community around their event? Are people retaining? Are those events produced in a way that they can streamline the operations across the events? Those are all the challenges that event organizers are facing and that Bizabo is coming to solve. But we're certainly not the first event technology to exist in the market. There are many other ones. 
we are definitely the first ones to not look at it as an event management software, but to look at it as an event success platform. And the difference between all those things is that we're looking at holistically. Holistically, how can we integrate all the different tools that are required in order to create a successful event? And there are many different tools that fall under that bucket. And the smartest way to do that is that all the tools work interchangeably together, they work in a smart way, and they're able to provide the best experience for all the stakeholders involved. So we're looking at the event organizer, we're looking at the sponsor, we're looking at the attendee, the speakers. How can they all have a successful event? And what are the ways in which we're doing that? So starting off with designing a beautiful event experience. The event starts with building the event website, and then you want to have a mobile app, and then you want to be communicating over email with your attendees. You're doing all those things with the Visible platform. Inside the platform, there's a website editor in which the event organizer can very easily design a beautiful event website, make it customizable to fit the brand needs, and very easily start the experience of building the event. But then, say the event website is already created, and that might take him an hour, two hours, if he wants to add a beautiful video in the background and add more information to it. From that point, it comes to how are we promoting the event? Because the biggest challenge of event organizers is actually to get people to attend events. It's not enough that you organize and you have everything planned. If people are not actually coming, the event is not going to be a successful one. So the Visible platform helps the event organizers to promote the event in many different tools. Some of the tools involve email communication. They can send emails from the system itself. Some of those are related to connecting your Visible account to the advertising tools that you're, that you're using, whether that is going to be the Facebook campaigns that you're running, Google AdWords. By connecting the systems, you're actually able to measure the performance performance from a view to a visit to a purchase to a registration and be able to invest the money in the places that you should be investing in it. We're also helping you turn your attendees into real advocates, real brand ambassadors of your event with smart tools that involve sharing the event in social media and providing incentives for people that are attending your event to share that they're coming and be incentivized for it. Other than that, we know that the agenda of the event is the heart of the agenda. Is, is the heart of the event, and we're putting a lot of focus into allowing the organizer to really easily design that agenda, throw in the information, have that information be presented in a beautiful way when we're looking at the website experience, at the mobile experience, all the information that the organizer is providing is updated on the fly. If he wants to change the location of the event, if he wants to change the timing of a session, you update it once over the web and it updates through the mobile version as well. And everything is happening in order to really streamline the process of planning the event. We know that one of the biggest challenges of organizers is the fact that they're still working with an Excel spreadsheet and they're using siloed solutions. So all of those need to work together, no. The Visible platform is there to help you do everything all in one place, and you need to put the information once, and that's it. It's updated across devices. Other than that, in order to have a successful event, an event that has maybe thousands of registrations, for example, HubSpot's inbound event that is happening in October, it's an event with more than 25,000 attendees, that required advanced registration skills, and that's what we're providing the event organizers. Other than that, we want Visible to be their internal CRM for events. It's not enough that in every event that you're running, you want to be importing lists of contacts that might be attending. You want to have one system that remembers all the attendees that you had previously and contains all the information that you collected throughout the registration experience so that you don't need to do things twice, so that you can pull the relevant lists and invite people through creating segmented smart lists through the system. So the platform includes an internal CRM system that allows you to really streamline that process as well. A successful event is obviously one that also includes having audience engage with one another, communicate with one another. So the platform includes a mobile app that allows for you to download it, and then very easily you can see all the people that are attending the event. You can send one-on-one -on -one messages. You can mark other people as leads. You can very easily view the agenda. So engagement, live polling, push notifications, everything so that the people who are attending the event would feel that this is a rewarding experience for them as well. 
Sponsorship opportunities is also definitely a big focus as well. If your sponsors are not happy from the event, they're not going to be retained and they're not going to come back the year after. So we're also focused on providing so much value to the sponsors so that they'll see exactly what the event is giving them, so that they'll see who are the people who are about to be attending. They'll present special offers. They'll present their information in a beautifully visual way. And they'll be satisfied as well from the event, the mobile app I mentioned. and completing it with the actual option to be data-driven, to look at the information across events, to see how is this event performing versus another one, to see post an event where people really engage with one another. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Miss B develops an app that uh, brings a beauty specialist to your door. I'd like to invite Gil Buchnik. I hope the counter is not working yet. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Hello, everyone. We are living in an on-demand world surrounded by magic buttons that help us get any service we want easily and quickly. All we need to do is say what service we want, when we want it, and where. Okay. So all we need to do is say what, when, and where, and the rest is taken care of by the technology itself. It's perfect as long as we don't care about the who. Think about it for a second. When you order a delivery, for example, from an app, you don't really care who delivers your pizza as long as it's there on time, right? When you order a taxi, you don't care who drives it, maybe a little bit, as long as it's safe, right? And gets you to where you want to go. But if we knew that the other technology, like uh, this one, for example, would work, then we'd probably prefer that, right? But when it comes to services that involve ourselves, personal services, like uh, the way we feel, the way we look, our health, then we definitely care about who performs them. We care about the person who will be giving us a haircut, right? And uh, we, women definitely care about the beautician who will uh, design their eyebrows. And we all care about the person who will give us a massage. In those kind of services, we are willing to work really hard in order to find the best options. We will uh, look through them in uh, Google. We will ask people's recommendations on Facebook. Uh, we will check the reviews. We will do whatever it takes in order to make sure that we select the right person. Once we selected him, uh, we want to set the expectation because surely our needs are completely different than all other people in the world, right? And um, if it goes well, then we're going to keep them forever because we all know how hard it is to find a perfect match. Now, the problem with that is that it takes a lot of time, and business people just don't have the time to do it. And this is exactly where Miss Biz gets into the picture. Miss Biz is a marketplace for lifestyle services on demand that focuses on the who. Our mission is to make it very easy for busy people to consume lifestyle services like beauty, wellness, fitness. Those are tens of different treatments and services that are all performed by professionals. They are all performed face to face and they are highly personal, which means we definitely care about who performs them. And by the way, there's a lot of money involved here as well. Uh, just taking the beauty market as an example, $60 average transaction once a month results in $400 billion market size, not a very small one. So with my co-founder and CEO, Maya Gura, and myself, we started Miss Biz two and a half years ago. We've created a beautiful app that allows our customers, mainly women, but not only women, to consume lifestyle services to their homes or offices. There's no driving requires. There's no waiting uh, in lines. There's no uh, looking for parking slots. Um, all you need to do is open the app, click on the magic button, and Miss Biz will deliver the right person to your doorstep. It's also working 24 hours a day, perfect for busy people who often work after the uh, hours of the spas or the salons. 
We've launched Miss Bees two years ago in Tel Aviv in a small pilot, but this small pilot really grew tremendously and we expanded since uh, dearly. So we now operate in 40 cities in Israel and operating in 200 postcodes in London. And really soon we are kicking off Spain with Madrid and adding more cities along the year. Now let's talk a little bit about our technologies. We optimize just about everything we have in the system, uh, based on location, availability, time. This is the logistics part. This is the basics. But in order to really do the perfect matching, we also use AI and machine learning to analyze and predict the demand, the predict the behavior of our customers based on their behavior graphs and other uh, aspects of their behaviors. We are capable of dynamically balancing the uh, marketplace in order to keep it balanced along the day and, and along the week. We also uh, are able to actually predict the satisfaction rates of our customers, not based on service, because people hate service. We actually predict it based on their behavior before, during, and after each service. We are able to predict their preferences, things like colors, brands, uh, all sorts of trends that are happening, all inside our algorithms. As a result, we get thousands of positive reviews uh, in the system, and even the retention rate can prove it. You can see the people who knows retention well, that you know that there is a drop and then a certain line. Uh, but here we actually see a growth in our revenue based on specific cohorts after 12 and 16 months. This is quite unique, by the way. So we talked about the customers. Now let's talk a little, a little bit about the other side of the marketplace, the service provider. They get access to practically unlimited number of customers. They choose when they want to work. They are not, they are not uh, committed to specific hours. And most of all, we optimize their calendar. Now, many of them start before Miss Biz. They use paper-based calendar like this. When we come, we change it. We give them an app that actually manages their whole work. So if their daily schedule looks time, like, something like this before Miss Biz, as you can see, a lot of idle time, travel time, not very efficient, we make it look like this. So they can actually work less hours and do more jobs and actually make more revenue. They are also not very experts in marketing. We give them access to our marketing tools uh, by providing them small marketing capsules they can all use in a very safe way that the platform uh, performs. We help them manage their customer base. Because as I mentioned earlier, people like to keep their favorite kind of service providers. We allow that from within the app and from within the platform. 1,000 professionals joined us since we started Miss Biz two years ago. Most of them didn't know how to set their goals for their business. They didn't know how to plan their revenue. But uh, with us, it's different because we help them onboard into the system. We help them set their goals. We've developed a specific and special achievement system that helps them keep track of their goals and keep them engaged. Um, and in fact, we actually act as their virtual coach uh, through the app. As a result, 400 service providers doubled their income since started using Miss Bees, and some of them even tripled it. This is a huge impact for their lives, and this is part of the vision that we are trying to achieve with Miss Bees. So 2018 already started, and we have some aggressive goals ahead of us. Uh, we are expanding to new verticals, new territories, and we would like to invite you all to support us and join this journey. Thank you. Uh, Credify develops unique services for the commercial real estate market. Ellie Risen, CEO, please. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Ellie Raisin. I'm the CEO of Credify. And uh, I'm going to walk you through a presentation about the company in some detail, but I'm just going to start with a couple of key points that I'd like to ask you to remember. We cover the commercial real estate market in the US. It's a $15 trillion market. We are basically Bloomberg for commercial real estate finance. And I'll explain what that means, but that wraps together big data analytics and its transactions, meaning marketplace. We work with leading financial and real estate companies. Just to give you a few names, if you wouldn't mind shutting the door, please. Uh, just to give you a few names on the financial side, we work with Moody's, we work with Dun & Bradstreet, we work with Capital One, we work with a number of big providers, including units of Berkshire Hathaway. On the real estate side, we work with CBRE, and on the banking regulator side, we work with a number of leading banking regulators across the US, as along with both Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, which are the leading housing, multifamily housing regulators in the US. Um, the last thing that I want to mention to you is that we're growing really quickly. Uh, we have super ambitious goals for this year as we take on more financial firms across U.S., and you will also see us launching our first non-U.S. jurisdiction late in the year. With all that, I want to start off by showing you some of our data. 
because at our core, we're very much a data company. We're driven by big data. We use analytics across the board, and we use that to power our marketplace. What you're seeing here on screen is a view of US commercial real estate lending activity um, from 2007 through today across the last 10 years. What you'll notice very quickly, it started high in 07, plummeted into the credit crisis, came back out. And therefore, real estate lending changes, and you must know what's going on in the real estate market to make the right investments, to make the right investments not only at the real estate level, um, which is what this will show you, but as you'll see in a moment, in banks, and why. This now is the same chart mapping real estate lending against bank stock prices, and what you'll see is they're highly correlated. In other words, if you're making loans in the real estate market, or you're buying real estate, or you're doing anything in real estate, you affect banks. Conversely, banks are driven by real estate. So at its core, what Credify is, is a company that not only sells analytics and data around the real estate markets to real estate guys, but we sell data about the entire US banking system to banking regulators and hedge funds that trade bank stocks. If you understand that, now you understand why we describe ourselves as Bloomberg for commercial real estate finance. What we're basically doing is sucking in massive amounts of data. We cover over 5 million properties across the US to understand the money that's invested by banks and other lenders, who owns them, which is super important, who is the tenant in them, what bonds are impacted in them, what stocks are impacted by them. Once you know this, you're able to make all the right trades in the marketplace, hence the Bloomberg moniker. You'll never see us, by the way, publish this on our website. We can't use their name, but that's essentially what we do. A little bit of background about us. We were founded in 2014. <clears throat> uh, we've raised $23 million so far from leading investors that include both Battery Ventures and Viola Ventures out of Israel, um, along with the venture arms of Mitsui, the uh, global Japan-based conglomerate, and Liberty Media, the US-based conglomerate. Um, and we have offices in New York, Tel Aviv, and actually newly so in California. In order to build out a Bloomberg for commercial real estate finance, you need a lot of different kinds of expertise, and not all to be found in one place. We've aggregated a best-in-class team across the US and Israel to build out our vision. It includes folks in Bloomberg, of course, JP Morgan, myself. I used to be a senior executive at Thomson Reuters before starting this company, um, along with folks who come from the real estate world and the uh, bond rating world. So what is Credify in more detail? As I said, data analytics transactions. What we're looking at here on screen are some of the, the capabilities that we have, some of the things that we sell our customers. First off to the top, Credify data. We take lots of different kinds of data about properties, about loans, about ownership, about tenants, about bonds that are impacted, and we bundle all that together in really clever ways to sell it to folks who play in the real estate world or the finance world. Second thing we do, we offer custom research to people who want to understand from a strategic perspective where should I be putting my money to work this year? And so you understand the amount of money that we're talking about. The money that we start, the, the money that the real estate market starts with is a small loan is a million dollars. It quickly scales up to 50 or 100 million dollars. These are very big bets. People need information to make the right decisions. We give them that data, both to understand the real estate market and the banks with which they're interacting. The last slide on the bottom here shows you something about our coverage. We cover over 13 trillion dollars of lending activity in the US. That's over 5 million properties, huge amounts of data to help financial folks make the right decisions, whether they're investing in the financial community because they're a hedge fund, because they're a mutual fund, um, or they're investing in the real estate world. The platform looks like this. In other words, we're financed for the Facebook generation. We don't look like Bloomberg. That's quite intentional. We rely a lot on visualization and maps. We also offer a marketplace that's aligned to our data platform. It's branded slightly differently as Credifax. What are we doing? We're using all of our data, because we know all the owners and what they own, and all the lenders, and what do they like to work with. And we basically use that data to power this marketplace where we're matching borrowers to lenders, sitting in the middle, helping the borrower get the right loan at the right price, and taking our own fee as part of that process. We also sell what we brand here as lender profiles for financial services. Once again, this is for banking regulators and hedge funds to make the right investments in the right banks. In other words, if you're sitting in the year 2007, 2008, and you're wondering who, which bank is about to blow up because of stupid real estate loans they did, and by the way, the real estate uh, loans were what essentially brought down the banking system, or almost brought down the banking system in 08. If you're wondering, who do I go long on, buy their stock? Who do I go short on, sell their stock? That's exactly what we're selling you here, is data about what pools of real estate risk that these banks sit on. And a lot of these banks are nothing more than shells for real estate. And we're trusted by a lot of different kinds of players. I name dropped earlier. This is a little bit of a longer list. We have yet a longer list of the kind of folks who are our clients who trust us to provide them data, to power their business, to make higher fire decisions, to set monetary policy across the US. We do a lot of different kinds of things using our data, all built out of Israel and sold in the US. Thank you very much.
Freightos is an online marketplace for freight related uh, rate management. Svi Schreiber. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Svi Schreiber, CEO of Freitos. And Freitos is like um, Expedia, uh, a marketplace for international shipping, international freight, which is a trillion dollar industry. In, in fact, $18.7 trillion of goods um, cross borders every single uh, year. And uh, if you look at the labels on your clothes and your laptop, that won't surprise you, because unless you're from China, 90% of the products that you buy are uh, imported. And the cost of shipping those uh, products around the world is, is a trillion dollars, a thousand billion dollars are spent every year on shipping and uh, air cargo. But believe it or not, this entire industry, you're, you're probably thinking that shipping a container is as easy as shipping a FedEx box or something, but it's really not. The entire industry is totally offline. There's a 30% discrepancy between what one importer pays and another. You can wait three or four days just for a simple price quote. There's a hundred times more paperwork involved in shipping a container versus a, a FedEx box. And in about 90% of cases, you can't do track and trace in a, in a sufficient way. So this entire industry is really incredibly um, outdated. And, and so our vision at Freitos is to power frictionless trade between people all around the world by bringing global shipping online. We want to make shipping a container as easy as sending a FedEx box, as easy as buying a passenger airline ticket online. Um, a little bit about the company. We've raised $50 million in a seed A and B. We were proud to have our crowd um, being our first investor, and we are proud to have been the first investment of our crowd way back in 2012. And we now have a team of 160 people around the world, including an acquisition that we made and some other um, excellent investors. So let me see if I can play this and show you what it looks like. Hey, I don't need to tell you how many goddamn things are being shipped around the world right now. My next shipment, I need to get 182 pallets of teddy bears out here yesterday. You think little Betsy Sue has any clue what it takes to get Mr. Fluff Fluff from Shanghai to Little School of Tennessee? It takes two factories, three trucks, a huge ship, two cranes, a train, six drivers, one captain, and a really good masseuse. And do you know how much it's gonna cost me or how long it's gonna take? I don't, and that's just the shipping. You know how complicated the process is. You need to get the commercial invoice, call the forwarder, send the power of attorney, schedule a tick update, call the forwarder again, smoke signal the truck, or fax the invoice to the freight company. Faxes? Seriously? I'm moving to the future. I'm using Fredo's. You see, Fredo's is an online web platform that takes all of this nonsense and puts it into one silky smooth website with all of these beautiful, courageous people behind it. <laughs> you just say the what, where, and when, and Fredo's insane algorithms will find the right route, provider, and price quote for all of your ocean, air, rail, or trucking shipments. Guaranteed all in prices with real transit times from providers that rock hard at logistics. And to make little Betsy Sue happy, all that's left is one Okay, so uh, as you see, we're trying to take a very large, very conservative industry and bring it into the modern age. Uh, that filming at the end, by the way, was in our office, uh, not far from here in um, Jerusalem. And uh, the website is public, so you can come in and, and search. Say you've got a container from Shanghai to Chicago or from M Mumbai to Paris, um, air cargo as well. You say origin, destination, what you want to ship. Uh, and in a few seconds, you see prices. Uh, and that's already working uh, extremely well. And one of our big challenges for this year is what you see right now to make the whole track and trace uh, online. And that's still work in progress because getting the pricing online was hard enough. That took us some years. And now we're working hard to get the whole track and trace visibility online as well and make the entire process um, online and smooth. Um, and the marketplace is growing very, um, very well. We're not publishing actual numbers, but you can see the relative growth. We grew about uh, 10x last year. Uh, the most popular uh, route is from China to the US. No, no big surprise there, but we also have several other, you know, many other countries in play as well. 
Um, may, maybe just one word then about our strategy, because it, it was kind of interesting. Six years ago, when we started Freightos, we wanted to create this marketplace site, but there was a, a huge problem. None of the freight forwarders and ship, shipping companies could give us an instant price. There's no API, no GDS like Sabre, like there was for travel agents. There was no way to get the data. So our strategy was we spent the first four years of Freightos building software as a service, SaaS, um, both the Accelerate products and also we acquired a company called Web Cargo. And we spent four years enabling the logistics service provider to automate their price quotes. And only after four years, now we work with 1,000 freight forwarders, including big companies like um, FedEx, Panalpina, Siva. I don't, I don't know if you know those names. Presumably, at least you know FedEx. Um, we've helped those companies to automate their price quotes. And only after four years of selling SaaS were we finally ready with some suppliers who could quote instantly. And then we launched the marketplace 18 months ago, and as I mentioned, that's what's been growing very nicely and rapidly. And here's some of the names um, that I mentioned and some of the other companies. Every one of these companies at the top is a multi-billion dollar logistics company who's using Freightos software to automate their price quotes. FedEx don't need our software to automate price quotes for a small package, but if you send a container with, Freitos, um, uh, uh, with FedEx, then they're using Freightos uh, to price that. And what's interesting at the bottom, these companies are not, our, are not our customers, but when Nike or 3M call up Hellman or Schenker for a price quote, they're getting back a price quote which is powered by Freitos and which says powered by Freitos. So I think we're making good progress in um, bringing the, this huge conservative industry online. And uh, perhaps you can help us if you or someone you know does import-export, a, a retailer, a manufacturing company, then uh, we'd be delighted to speak to them and see if we can help them with their shipping. Thank you very much. Proof is a pilot, a pilot as a service, which uh, streamlines the proof of concept process between startups and enterprises. Toby Olshanetsky, please. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Tobiel Szanetsky, I'm the co-founder of Proof. And Proof basically is the result of 20 years of pain that I've been uh, chasing CTOs and CIOs of enterprise, try to convince them to open for me a testing environment so I can actually do a proof of concept for one of my previous uh, startup. And what we saw that for 20 years, nothing has changed in the way how a startup or a vendor is actually trying to uh, find the right contact, get a connection, try to understand the network topology and the problem of the enterprise, and then try to do a proof of concept that can actually sell them their technology. So we want to create and disrupt this ecosystem, and we actually we didn't know when we started how big is the pain that we are uh, solving. And uh, just recently, two weeks ago, uh, Proof was uh, named by uh, Frost Sullivan as the most disrupted company for 2018 in the enterprise software uh, domain because we took a very big problem for enterprise to buy enterprise software and we wrapped the process. So how we are doing it? Thank you very much. <laughs> we are saying uh, PLC the right way, uh, proof of concept uh, the right way. What we are trying to do is basically not just to provide, let's say, a smart sandbox environment to our customer. What we are trying to do is give them any service around the proof of concept that they will need that will give them the ability to run everything much, much faster with a lot of information and answer all the different uh, problems that they have. For example, how do you find the right uh, startup? You'll be surprised how many, and you're actually seeing in an event like that, how many uh, you know, international banks, how many international enterprises are coming to such events to try to find the best uh, vendors for them. But how do they know if this vendor that they're finding can actually match what their needs, can actually implement the solution and provide them a best of breed uh, environment? So one of our key features of the platform, which is the entry place of the marketplace, is basically a marketplace with uh, a thousand and something uh, uh, vendors that were vetted by our analyst team that every vendor on the platform has a real technology and is financially stable to run this uh, solution. The second thing is, uh, and let's take uh, regulation. And the reason that one of the fastest growing vertical on our platform is actually the most regulated industry, which is a crazy thing. You know, for me, to chase banks or pharmaceuticals or even car manufacturers were the, the last thing always on my priority because I always say this is going to be a huge long cycle of selling our technology. 
But what we saw is that the more regulated the industry is, more con uh, problems that they have to onboard different technologies, security issues, privacy issues, then our solutions like the holy grail for them to test innovation, this is why the financial verticals and pharmaceuticals are the fastest growing vertical on our platform. And the other thing that we give them, we give them a very simple analyst tool that basically give them ability how to monitor and manage everything of the, what the, they're running. So with Proof, basically, you can discover, you can build it to the POC environments, you can add additional APIs of actually how to make sure that this vendor that you are now connecting, uh, actually, Fraser just mentioned the APIs. We are seeing this as a big problem for all the large enterprises that they want to make sure that if they are now implementing a technology, this technology will actually be able to talk with the legacy uh, uh, environments. So we're actually simulating the APIs on the testing uh, environment, and we're helping them to bypass this uh, problem. What uh, I think is this one of the powerful things that uh, we're doing in Prove, that we took a very complex situation, actually a very boring and complex uh, situation, of how actually building fast a POC, uh, proof of concept environment, and this environment can be from a very simple to, to a multi-layer sophisticated with Docker containers environment that usually took months uh, for the enterprise to configure, and basically they can do it in 15 minutes. No joking, 15 minutes you can build a, a full uh, POC environment using our wizard. And then the, the enterprise came to us and said, OK, fantastic. So you gave us this tool to build uh, our environment. So you gave us a tool how to uh, uh, open a, a smart box or a sandbox uh, uh, outside of our network. But we cannot use our data. We as a bank, even if we want to check our blockchain technologies, we cannot allow the vendors to use our data because of privacy regulation, GDLP, which is a new regulation that just came. So we have a new tool that uh, it's called Deep Mirroring that we're actually building from scratch. So we are not doing masking or, or uh, scrambling of the data of the enterprise. We are building from scratch POC data that we provide the enterprise to actually run the, the vendors on top of that. So by doing this, suddenly contracts that used to be this thick and every startup that is working with the uh, uh, regulated industry, know that the, the nightmare of a contract, suddenly by not using the environment, not using the data, not using the KPIs, and not using the API, suddenly it became no-brainer for a vendor to uh, uh, run a POC with an enterprise. Another thing that we are giving them, because they can now test multiple vendors at the same time, is a tool to actually see in real time how each one of those uh, vendors are behaving. Because think about the, the change that we did. Until now, enterprise was checking one vendor at a time. They had no tool to compare an apple to apple, especially if uh, it was different technology, because one startup can be a SaaS, another startup can be a hybrid solution, another startup needs to install their on-prem uh, environments. So our algorithm takes in real time all the information that goes into our pipes. We normalize the results, and we give an apple to apple comparison to the enterprise in real time on their dashboard. And they can actually see, sorry, sorry for my language, which startup is bullshit them. And which startup is actually providing the best results in real time? The marketplace is, I think, is the, uh, one of the, the, the entry uh, step for the enterprise that they are getting to our platform, as I said. All the vendors on our platform has actually tested, and uh, we check them. And just to give you a flavor of numbers, uh, since opening the platform till today, this morning, we had about 4,200 and chain vendor ap uh, applying to prove. And we only approve 1,200 and, and change. So you can see that's more than uh, two-thirds. Politely, we denied either because they were too young, too early, or didn't have real technology. And you'd be amazed how many vendors are trying to come to the enterprise, trying to do a POC, but they have nothing. They're actually trying to, to use the enterprise as the design partner. And this is actually one of the key features that the enterprise is using our platform as, as a filtering of all of that uh, problem. Red Cloud was a feature that we just announced, and uh, it was just launched with one of the largest uh, Japanese uh, insurance company in Japan called Sompo. They actually publish uh, this uh, PR. And it's basically a shooting range for POC. Thank you very much. Influitive is a leader in uh, B2B advocate marketing. Fraser Stark, please. Hi everyone, I'm Fraser Stark. I'm the VP of EMEA for Influitive. Thanks for having me. 
What our founders realized in 2010 is the way that people buy things has changed fundamentally. People don't want to hear from your sales reps anymore. They don't want their inbox bombarded. Instead, people are empowered by social networks, by other forms of communication. They're skeptical of what they hear from companies. And so they're turning to their peers to get information they can trust to help them make decisions. At the same time, the job of marketers is getting much harder. This data from Salesforce shows that conversion rates on leads are abysmally low. Across the board, stacked from, from leads that you buy as a list over to uh, even people that come in through your website are only closing at 1.5%. But there's one that we've left off, which is that referrals that come in from customers uh, and even employees to some extent are closing about two and a half times faster. And the reason for that is that 83% of buyers say they, want inf they trust information they hear from their peers, not what they're hearing from brands. And that's driving a huge difference. Buyers are, are really seeking information they can trust to help them make purchase decisions. Um, trust in institutions, whether those are governments, NGOs, or obviously companies, is decreasing over time. And what's the most trustable information is something from your peer, whether that's a friend, a colleague, a family member. So as people are making buying decisions on, on uh, software and, and other things they're buying for their jobs, they're really seeking that information that they can trust. Um, at the same time, the world of B2B buying is merging in some respects with consumer technologies. So a lot of companies that were once purely B2B and behaved in that environment are now actually operating on both sides. And it may, it's imperative, therefore, for marketers at B2B companies to bring in the best things out of the B2C world. So Influitive's mission is to help companies grow by unlocking the potential of their advocates. We do that through a set of technologies. So on the left, you can see uh, our community portal, where we bring a company's advocates together in an engaging place online, um, where they have the communication with the company about all the things that that company wants them to do. We support that with a mobile app because this is the type of activity that makes a lot of sense to do when you're on the road or, or on the fly. We also do that through an embeddable widget, which is on the right-hand side of the screen. That allows companies to bring the asks that they have of their advocates to any website that they control. So rather than sending those people to a dedicated portal, you bring that ask and that communication to them wherever they are. Here's an example of a company asking for an advocate to leave a review on G2 Crowd, saying, share your thoughts on working with us with the, with the wider world. And I can see I'll get 500 points for doing that. As I collect those points, there's a leaderboard. So we put in game mechanics, making it fun for the advocates to, to compete with their peers, see how they're doing. Uh, there's also badges. So for certain sets of tasks that you have, you can um, award badges, which are mo very motivating for some people. Um, and finally, those points are a currency. They can be redeemed against the catalog of rewards that each one of our customers sets. They don't have to be monetary. In fact, the best rewards are not monetary. They're experiences, they're emotional rewards. Here you can see dinner at a nice restaurant with the executive team of the company that I might advocate for, or a charitable donation to a cause that I support. So you're linking your company with that cause and with doing good for the, the broader world. Finally, there's elements of community. So the advocates can talk to one another about the company, where they see it going in the future. These aren't support forums where people complain about what happened when the screen goes black. These are communities that are forward-looking, uplifting discussions about the future of that company. The, the set of tasks that an advocate can do is incredibly broad. So our customers use their advocates to do all of these things. Things like taking reference calls, getting a happy customer to get on the phone with a prospect and help close that deal. Or maybe the deal originates with a referral that came in through one of those existing customers. Or perhaps they're sharing your message about a new product release or an event you're hosting that's coming up on social media. Anything that you can imagine your customers can do, given the right motivations and community, they're willing to engage and help you to do that. Uh, we do this today primarily for B2B technology companies. Not exclusively. We work with some consumer companies and some non-tech, but I'd say 95% is, uh, is B2B technology uh, across a number of different subsectors. And today we work for eight out of 10 of the largest software companies in the world. So there's a, there's a real movement coming here about incorporating customers into the growth process. Um, our customers report huge ROI on these initiatives. They're, they're not cheap to run. They take financial resources. They take people's time. You need talented people to manage this type of program. 
Um, but we, we ran an independent study with a number of our customers and they reported a seven to 20 uh, revenue multiple return on their investment. So when done right, incredibly powerful at generating results. Um, this function is in many ways becoming what, uh, what marketing automation was. It's uniting the various elements of a company's marketing. You know, you've got your events team, you've got your advertising, you've got the people running community and, and analytics. They're all coming together. This unites a marketing team. And in fact, even more than that, because there's impacts on the sales team and impacts on the product team uh, in terms of getting incredible product feedback, you're uniting the whole company around this type of program. It really does become a great unifier for a company. Um, this concept is really growing in, in popularity. We're seeing a lot more PR about it. Uh, the press is picking up on this. You're getting more professionals. People are listing on LinkedIn that they're an advocate marketer and that their skill set is helping get a company's advocates to take those actions. Um, and finally, the, the ratings are, are rising. The analysts are picking up on this. So there's a real movement forming. Um, Today, in 2000, at the close of 2017, we work primarily with B2B technology companies, as I said, driving traditional advocate marketing activities. Um, that's changing over, you know, as we evolve, we're, we're carefully scaling up on both of those dimensions. So we're starting to work um, you know, beyond, along the, the horizontal axis, more than just advocate marketing. It's about surround selling, it's about channel, um, and it's about influencer marketing as well. And then the companies that we work with are diversifying as well. So, I'm excited about this. Um, I'll be here after. If any of you want to uh, stop by, I'll just stand right here and happy to take questions. Thank you very much.